Hello, my name is Ian Reyes, and for my GD project, I did Culture Shock. Now, Culture Shock is a prompt where you choose a country and you basically plan and budget a trip to that country of your choice. For, the, for, my, for my Culture Shock project, I chose China. One, for the reasons being, I am half Chinese myself, so I do know some of the language and culture. I'm, I've played many games based on the history of China, and I also really like ancient history itself, and China has a lot of ancient history. So I'm gonna first talk about history. So the first government uh, created in China was in 2070 BC, and from this, the Cha, the Cha, the Xia Dynasty was born, but scientists believe it could be possibly myth mythical. After this, the Shang Dynasty followed, and then it started with more dynasties, leading up to the Han Dynasty, which started the Three Kingdoms period. In this period, many rulers decided to try and unify China under their rule. And the three that came out on top were Cao Cao, governing Wei, Liu Bei, governing Xu, and Sun Jin, governing Wu. However, uh, Sima Yi, a former strategist of Wei, overthrew, overthrew Cao Cao and became the new governor of Jin. After this, he attacked both Xu and Wu and unified China in around 280 AD. After this, more dynasties followed, and the last dynasty was the Qing Dynasty, ending in 1911. There are three main religions in China. These are Taoism, Buddhism, and Confucianism. So Taoism was created by a Chinese philosopher named Mao Zhu. He wrote a book named Tao Te Ching, which means the way and its power. And Confucianism, Confucianism was created by Confucius, another Chinese philosopher. Instead of writing a book, he wrote, he expressed his ideas through short sayings. And because of this, Confucianism was never really an organized religion. And finally, Buddhism was created by Gautama Buddha. He was actually the son, he was born as the son of a king in Nepal, but after wandering the world, he saw the suffering of life and people living in poverty. So from this, he thought of ideas such as nature and purification. And, and these ideas would eventually be spread across, spread across Southeast Asia. And China was one of the countries included. Food. Some traditional Chinese food include noodles, noodles, fried rice, roast duck, wontons, and dumplings. And a traditional drink is herbal tea, as it's believed to have health, health, health benefits and cleanse the body. Landmarks. So there are many landmarks in China, some being historical, like the Terracotta Warriors, the Summer Palace, the Great Wall of China, and the Forbidden City, and others that just look look fascinating, such as the Rainbow Mountains and the Reed Food Caves. The Forbidden City. The Forbidden City was a building made to house em Chinese emperors. It was built between 1406 and 1420, and it housed Chinese emperors up until 1911. And it now is a museum housing many Chinese art and artifacts. And an old myth was that the Forbidden City had 9,999 rooms. However, it only has about 8,000. So the myth is debunked. The Terracotta Warriors. The Terracotta Warriors is an, is an exhibition in a museum located in the Guangzhou area of Shanxi province. It was in fact discovered by farmers trying to build a well in 1917. And these, the, each of the Terracotta Warriors were created by clay and, and had unique, and each had unique faces, armor, and hairstyles. And these terracotta warriors were created to house or to protect Emperor Qin Shi Huang in the afterlife. The Summer Palace. The Summer Palace is a landmark in Beijing, China. It was created in, in 1750 as the emperor's relaxation area. Hmm. However, in the 1860s, during the Second Opium War, it was damaged by the British and it was then rebuilt by the emperor at the time, Xi Shi, who, who had the idea of a, another relaxation area, and he named this one the, the Summer Palace. 
However, it was furthermore damaged again before being rebuilt in 1949. And in 1961, it was announced as the first cultural relic site, national cultural relic site. Festivals. There are many festivals in China, such as the Dragon Boat Festival and Chinese New Year. In Chinese New Year, I, I will talk about Chinese New Year. In Chinese New Year, you will see the color red come up a lot. So lots of Chinese houses will have red banners and red lanterns hanging from the houses. And the elderly will also give children red envelopes filled with money. Traditions. China has many traditions and beliefs, two of these being Feng Shui and the Chinese Zodiac. I will talk about the Chinese Zodiac. And the Chinese Zodiac is the myth, or is the yearly cycle between 12 different animals. And the myth was that 12 animals went to a heavenly race to decide their rankings in the, in the cycle. And as you can see, there is no cat in the, in the cycle. And the myth was, goes that the cat picked on the rat a lot. So when the cat was sleeping during the heavenly race, the rat, the rat went to the heavenly race to try and beat the cat at something. Language phrases. There are many, well, there are many language phrases used in China. Some, the most well known I've heard of are Ni hao and zai jian, meaning hi and bai respectively. To apologize, you can say de bu qi. And to ask for someone's name, you can say ni jiao shen me And this is my travel itinerary. So for my itinerary, I chose lots of historical sites and not really many cool sites, fascinating sites. And it spans 10 days, and it spans 10 days. And here is the cost, cost of the trip. The most expensive being the hotel room and flights. And the total comes out to $5,019. And this is my GT project. And here are my citations. And we're done.